All right, we are here this morning with Brian Van Dyke from uh, owns two Kitty Academy uh, franchises in Bryan and College Station. Thanks so much for being part of our class. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Okay, so um, give me your background. Uh, how did you how did you come into owning two franchises? Sure. So uh, back in 2015, uh, I was in oil and gas for uh, quite a few years. And uh, at the time, the oil prices were going down, uh, kind of opposite what we're seeing now. <clears throat> but with the prices going down, um, I was in the field and they were starting to cut field jobs. So we had at the time we had two little girls and uh, we just kind of started looking at things I could do to stay home. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, we looked at different things and we were we were unhappy where our two little girls were going to uh, child care at to a daycare. And so we just said, you know what, Let, let's look at it. Let's see what they got. We know the demand is here in the town. And uh, long story short, uh, we we joined uh, arms with Kitty Academy and we sit here right now with two locations in the Bryan College Station area. Yeah. And, 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 and child care, I mean, it's it's a it's a necessity. You know, it's it's everybody. Ha I mean, the, the working couples have to have it. So it's like it's, it's certainly something that's never going to like like you said, there's always a demand for it. There's no, it's never going to be going away. But boy, you're in the oil and gas industry. And then you go into the child care industry. Do they, do they, you went to A&M, correct? Correct. And what's your degree in there? My degree is in ag leadership and development. Agricultural leadership and development? Correct. Okay. And uh, did, how did, how did all of that? How like, did it all happen? I mean, I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's, Kitty uh, Academy look at that and go like, this guy's an oil guy. Like, sure. I'm sure he can watch kids. Like, you know, it, it, it's funny. It's funny. You know, um, we, uh, we had four different franchises. We knew we wanted to go to a franchise route and why, because here's, what's cool about franchises. They give you the support system. <clears throat> now, do they, uh, do they ask for, for fees in exchange for that support system? Absolutely. Yeah. But not only do you get a support system, you get the brand recognition from a, you know nationally accredited schools throughout the whole U.S. Uh, they help you marketing. They help you find real estate. They help you with ongoing business operations. You know, they help you with financing. These people already have everything ready to go, but there's a price that's, you know, that's, a, that's associated with it. <clears throat> so, uh, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, there's a there's a cost associated with it. But like you said, me coming from oil and gas, my wife at the time uh, was a stay at home mom. She has HR background. Could we have done it ourselves? Probably. But we needed something that was kind of a fail proof system that everybody, you know, there were many success stories in front of us with the same franchise that, that yeah. we knew that this is what we wanted to do. And why, why Kitty Academy? Why not um, Primrose or any of the other ones that are uh, there? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know that industry. Yeah. But, but so there are other ones. So there's a Primrose already here. Um, okay. And so we knew we didn't want to do that one. Uh, <clears throat> we reached out to the three. We, we really narrowed it down to um, by the time we, we read what's called a financial disclosure document, which is something that every franchise has to send you before they can even talk to you. It's kind of all the, the ins and outs, the legal terms. Before they can even start communication with you, you have to get one of these. Well, my wife is the one that will sit down and highlight every other word. <laughs> Me, I look at it and I just, it's a new paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> but she read one of them. And by the end of it, you didn't even own the chair you sat in. Mm -hmm. And so there's, you know, the devil's in the details. And when you read the details, when you find out what, what kind of companies, some of them are really like. Yeah. Um, another one, we, when we talked to them, they said uh, that they didn't feel that the, that the demographics in our area, you know, supported one of their child care centers. And so I said, okay, fine. But in the back of my head, we knew because we were a customer of our own product. Yeah. Like we knew what we had. And just as a, you know, when we opened our college station school, which opened in 2016, still to this day, it is the only, it, it's the highest first day enrollment for any Kitty Academy in history. Why? Just because the demand was there. Mm. And, and, and we knew our area. We knew what we had. Right. Um, and we had to, we had to sell it. And once, once we sat down with Kitty Academy, we went to their headquarters in Maryland, <clears throat> just North of uh, Baltimore. Okay. And when we sat down with them, you know, they felt like family and they interviewed us. We interviewed them. It, it was kind of a, you know, it had to be a mutual agreement because we're locking arms for the next 15, 20 years. And so 
when we told them our vision in our area, like they believed us. They said, right. go, let's do it. And so having having someone put that trust in us and say, no, we're not going to do this. You have to go to this location. You have to do this. We said, no, we already knew where we wanted geographically. And I explained to them why I, it, it just it it was a it was a it's it's been a great relationship. With them. So you so 2015, you decide you want to do this. 2016, you open your first store. And what is the. Uh, what's the, what's the cost? Uh, was there a ton out of pocket? Was it financed? What are the royalties like? How did that all work? So, um, okay. So their initial initiation fee, uh, as of right now is, uh, I think $125,000. Okay. That, that gets you, that's your, that's your key to open the doors, $125,000. Now, of course there's financial stipulations. They want to see that you have liquid assets, you have things, you know, on the back burner in case if there is an emergency, you have some reserve funds to where you can. Uh, how, much, you, how much do they want to see you have? Uh, I think as of right now, they want to see three to four hundred thousand liquid. <clears throat> wow, three to four hundred thousand liquid assets. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, that can be anything from you know investments that can be liquidated, uh, equity in house. Um, okay. okay. You know, just just liquidable assets. Okay. I thought you meant like cash in the bank. I'm like, yeah, hey, no, 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 not just, not okay. just. Not just cash in a coffee can out in the backyard with the treasure map <laughs> under your bed. Right, right. <laughs> um, but hey, there's VJ. I know that guy. <clears throat> uh, so most of it is financed. Um, most places when you go to now, uh, that, that $125,000, part of it can still be financed. And yeah. so what's cool is you go to a bank and uh, if you want to buy the real estate and you want to buy uh, all the 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 seven A loan, which is your fixtures, furnitures, and, and equipment. Um, you're looking at probably uh, two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, you need to come up with cash. Okay. I took a different approach, and this is an approach that um, I, I saw staying up late one night, and I took a build the suit approach, which yeah. means I involved an investor on the real estate. <clears throat> So we did the build the suit and I did a purchase option of five years. So that way I stayed liquid. Okay. That's what allowed me to open up the second location two years later rather than five years later. Okay. So there's different avenues that you can take. Um, and so you, don't, you, you, did, you didn't buy the location? You, you Correct. I, I, rented, I rented the college station location. We had a five-year purchase agreement. Now we've entered that purchase agreement. Actually, in the next 30 days, we'll be buying the college station location. Okay. I've already got built in equity into it. I've got about 400,000 built in it's equity like into it. It's like a lease to purchase. Uh, lease it. Yep. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Okay. Uh, so going back to the, uh, to kind of the standard thing, if you buy the real estate, you're looking about 20% down. You're looking probably about 250, $300,000 now. Um, but if you want to do a lease option where you have a landlord, things like that, you can get in for as little as probably a hundred to 125, maybe a hundred fifty thousand dollars. <throat> just depends. Um, like I said, you know, I want to stay cash liquid. I want to, that way if opportunities came up. I was able to, uh, you know, to take advantage of it. Um, if we would have done the real estate, it would have wiped, if, if I would have bought the real estate, it would have wiped me out of everything right okay. then and there. And then I just would have been cash strapped trying to figure right. out if we did have an issue or if another opportunity, you know, arose, I wouldn't be able to take advantage of it. So let's say, so, so the, so you get in, you, you've got you've got a huge demand on the first day in College Station, which is fantastic. What is the royalties you pay back to Kitty Academy? What's the agreement from there on out? Sure. So uh, what they do is they charge a total of nine percent. Okay. Seven percent is operations. Uh, they charge seven percent on your operation numbers, but then they also take two percent, which is a national brand building fund. Uh, part of that national brand building fund is they sponsor a couple shows on PBS. Um, at the time it was, uh, uh, science kid. Um, what, what's the science kid's name? I can't remember. Um, yeah, but it was, it was I, him I, at the I, time because he was, he was the big deal. Right. Um, and then they did pink delicious. Uh, they did, they've done a couple of those, but, but these are the demographics that we're hitting. You know, sure. we are hitting those demographics that have the parents of 25 to 34, you know, up to 40 years of age. Right. And their kids are young and their kids are watching PBS. They're watching, you know, they're watching these shows. <clears throat> right. Not only that, um, we do uh, Curious Curious George was another one that we sponsored on a national level. 
What's great about that brand building fund, though, it just doesn't stop at the TV. I mean, it's social media, it's it's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's uh, it's Twitter. It's it's all these things that they have that corporate team that knows and can track where they're seeing the best, uh, you know, the best bang for our buck. Yeah, it's interesting. I just saw Courtney, my sister-in-law, pop, pop up on here, uh, as well, her video here, uh, and she and, and by the way, she owned and for my students, she owns a location in. Uh, there there she's right there. Uh, yeah, she, there she, she owns is. a location up in uh, in Northwest uh, Houston area as well, and so that's how we Brian and I got connected here. Um, but uh, but but interesting. So so um, so then so then I guess the the idea would be you're paying them nine percent. Uh, there's there's a lot of this going into why not just open up your own is is you think you could have been as successful opening your own small business running a a, a child care or would it have crashed and burned do you think because you just didn't have the operational or or the know how to get it all I, I tell you what I think I think we would have been successful because of the demand um, would we have would we have made some bumps and bruises mistakes? Uh, along the way, yes, and I think our our break even would have been a lot longer. Okay. We would have struggled a lot longer. Yeah, but it's one of those things that the demand was so high, uh, we could have made these mistakes. Now, would it have? Would we have paid for it in the long run? Yeah, I think so. But with the franchise, we were able to collapse those time frames, and we had the support system. It was there in place. It's it's basically. <clears throat> what, what I like about Kitty Academy is they let you do what you need to do to be successful in your local area. Okay. It's not like some of these other things like uh, other businesses where you can go to a, you can go to a store in the DFW area. Mm -hmm. You can go to a store down in the Rio Grande Valley. You can go to a store out in California or up North and they're all exactly the same, same brick, same color, same, like they allow us, on the exterior to fit into our community. And okay. that's one of Kitty Academy's taglines is community begins here because not only do they want us to create a community inside the school, they want us to be a part of the community outside the school, which yeah. allows us to do those things. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things that they give you the operations manual. You hear my dog in the background. She wants yeah. ice. So just ignore, <clears throat> we got a new, uh, new ice machine. She's in love with it. <laughs> But the franchise gives you the system. It's how much are you going to buy into the system and how much are you going to work the system is how quick you'll be successful. Gotcha. It sounds like, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're an apostle for Kitty Academy. Like you, like you really, like it's been a great system for you and it's all, what are the, what are the, what are the problems with, uh, what, has there, has there been any like, oh my gosh, this franchise model is driving me crazy or is it just, staffing problems or is it just uh, uh, tough parents? Uh, I mean, I, I tell you what, you know, you're dealing with parents' prized possessions, right? Right. Um, so, I mean, parent, yeah, we, we have right now, I'd say our number one issue is staffing. And that is something you're seeing across the board. It doesn't matter if it's child care, restaurants, hospitality, uh, education, whatever it might be. Right. That's where you're seeing the issues. Um I was, I'm actually talking to a bunch of other uh, Kitty Academy franchisees right before this call on a, on a what's up chat. And we're trying to think of different ways to, to keep teachers motivated to come into work. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a new, it's a new generation. It's a new work ethic. We're just having to figure that out. And I think once money? we figure it, it out, is it just pain? What, you know what? That's not even working. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a, that's the sad thing. It's like what is going to tap into them? What's going to pull their heartstrings for them to come into work, be wanting to work? Yeah. Um. It, it's just it's just something we have to figure out because eighteen months ago, two years ago, this wasn't the situation. You know, money talked back then. Money doesn't really talk a whole lot now. So you got, we just got to figure out what makes them tick. Right. Um. Parents. Yeah. I mean, there's some parents. You're never going to be perfect, right? And so there's going to be situations. But as long as you take care of those situations, you take care of the issues, you talk to the parents, communication is key. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what we're about is not only we're about building relationships with our staff to build them up and help them better their career, but we want to build those relationships with our customers because we need we need that trust factor. Like I said, we're dealing with, with their most prized possessions. Right. Um, we take as young as six weeks old. I mean, oh my goodness. If you can imagine... 
you know, some of these kids, you know, I mean, obviously if they have younger siblings, like, can you imagine taking your younger sibling at six weeks of age to a childcare center? You know, you've got to trust them right. and, and we've got to also trust them knowing that they're going to, you know, they're going to give us all trust. It, it's, it's a two way road. <clears throat> Is there anything about Kitty Academy itself and the franchise model that you were like, man, I wish, I mean, you've been in this now for five years, six years now. So I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've seen some things where you're like, boy, I wish they would do this differently or that differently. Or do you feel like it's a pretty good system? Um, you know what? Every system's got its quirks. Um, there are some things, uh, you know, they're going through some changes right now in the curriculum. Um, and so they have to look at it from a macro perspective, right? Uh, meaning the whole U.S. And you have different philosophies, you have different theories about education uh, that are going on throughout the whole U.S. And so us in our area um, don't necessarily agree with some of the things that they're wanting to change. Yeah. Um, but that's what's great is we can still we can still teach the same thing. Yeah. Um, across the u.s and if we want to supplement the things they took out we can okay they're just taking it out of their curriculum so they allow us to supplement um <clears throat> you know they helped us they helped us during covid you know they released royalties during covid i mean you they know did. yeah uh also some of the things now with uh with the build you guys, Better you guys got down during covid did you because you're essential aren't you guys oh essential? yeah we i mean we got knocked down we went from uh our college station center can handle 188 kids our Brian can handle 229. We got knocked down to about 60, 60, 70 kids. Oh my goodness. For six or seven months. And you run the numbers at 60, 70 kids, you're you're sucking win. Like you're yeah. you're depleting every financial asset you got trying to hey. keep this thing running. And you still had all your staff. I mean, you couldn't let staff. Yeah. Go. I mean, we 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 let one staff person go uh on our terms. We let one one staff person go during that whole time. Um, you know, there were others that wanted to leave because they were, you know, unsure. They were scared. Uh, yeah. Didn't know, you know, the fear got to them. Right. And we we let them go gracefully. But uh, yeah, on our terms, we only let one person go during this whole during the whole COVID time. So so I run a sports cam business, and uh, yeah, I've been watching that in the back. Yeah, I, uh, I I've, I've run that for for 15, 16 years now, and you know, and I run and I hire staff in the summer too, and we run camps with churches and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I always think it's it curious whenever I talk to Courtney, like you know, dealing with staff members and what she's dealing with and what I'm dealing with. What would you say is the most common reason why someone? Uh, why you would have to let someone go? Like, what what are the what are what are the things that happen where you, you have to say this person just can't work here anymore? So, I've got two different answers for that. <laughs> one, <laughs> one I go back to my oil and gas days. Yeah, which back then you say you're done and they leave, and you never see them again. But my wife has got an HR background. Okay. And for her, it, it takes a lot of things to uh, get to that point, which I understand because you're dealing with Texas workforce, things like that. Right. Um, tardiness, uh, not following policies and procedures. Um, obviously, there's there's the more harsher things like you uh, spanking a kid or, you know, uh, using cell phones in classrooms. Right. Um, you know, we we are held to a standard by the state of Texas called the Texas Minimum Standards, which is is given out for all child care centers. <clears throat> so if they violate one of those standards, it, it's an automatic termination. Um, but, you know, if they if we start seeing patterns, you know, we document everything and we have to document because that's we're showing them. We're going to look, you've been late four times in the past 20 days, you've been, you know, you're taking a longer lunch break because they this. So, right. So that's, that's what I would say is most of it is, is the, uh, is the loyalty is the buying into the system. And then also just being, you know, being on time. Yeah. <laughs> So, so would you recommend somebody, you know, if they're, boy, they've got, you know, 
have got some assets in the bank and they are curious about what to do with them. I mean, has it been a good return for you? Do you feel like, um, it, it can, can we ask like, what are maybe your gross revenue or what's your profit or is there any, any kind of things like that that you can share with us? Yeah. So, uh, I would say, I would say, yes, it's been, it's been great. I mean, I, we haven't, I've, I haven't thought about going back to oil field until recently because of prices, the way they are. I know, I know jobs are there, you know, and they're paying very well. Um, but yeah, it, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's, it's supported our lifestyle of living, um, revenue for this year. Uh, we're looking at for the college station location, probably 2.3 million. Oh. Um, for the Brian location, we're looking at probably right close to 1.9 to 2 million. Wow. Um, uh, so it's, and then, you know, you got your variables, you know, they say gross profits from that point, anywhere from eight to 15% is kind of what you're looking at, uh, you know, at the end of the day, just there are those factors of labor. Labor is a big right. factor food because we offer food. Uh, so, you know, and supplies, those are your kind of three main factors that you can really, you can really hone in on and focus on the other day-to-day -day expenses, you know, are just, are just going to happen. Right. But those are your three variables. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, it's, it, it's been great. And like you said earlier, I mean, childcare is not going anywhere. Right. Uh, when we first visited our, our first center, whenever we were looking at this, we sat down with the owner he goes, look. I'm not going to tell you it's recession proof, but it's pretty darn close because what's <laughs> going to happen is if you have a single parent, uh, a single, you know, earner and they have a stay at home mom, they have a kid or two and a recession hits that second parent is going to go to work. And so now they're really going to need childcare. Right. Whereas childcare, it might've been optional before. Right. Um, but now, you know, you're seeing a lot more dual income families and if they have children, you know, they've established a, a certain lifestyle where they're going to need that childcare because they don't want to give up that child, give up that lifestyle. Yeah. But what we've also seen is childcare is a last expense they will cut. Mm. So, you know, it's, and we've seen it. I mean, you know, we saw it through COVID, we saw 60, 70 kids, you know, yeah. the others, the others, I would say 50 to 60% of them that pulled were out of fear. Yeah. They just didn't know and they didn't know what was going to happen. But I mean, we've, we've come back, you know, yeah. we've been, we've been between 80, 85 and 90% for the past eight months. Man. Uh, just, just clicking along. Man. Well, Brian, I appreciate your time, man. This has been fantastic. This is an interesting look into franchise. I mean, we always think franchising, we think McDonald's, but you know, there are uh, childcare uh, kitty Academy options that are franchisable as well. So I certainly appreciate your time.